Hey there Unmaskers, welcome to my channel Unmask It Now. Thanks for tuning in today. Today's video is part 2 of a two-part series on how to connect to an EC2 Windows instance using AWS Systems Manager Session Manager. If you haven't already checked the first part yet, please click on the link appearing on your screen and watch the part 1 of this video before you proceed to watch this one. As a precursor to this video, part 1 of the series has already covered the prerequisites for this video, that is, defining the necessary IAM permissions for both the user and the instance, and also creation of the VPC interface endpoints for Session Manager. As part of this video, we'll explore the guide to install Session Manager plugin on top of the AWS CLI, then configure the AWS CLI user to be able to start a PowerShell session to the Windows instance. For interactive login, Session Manager supports port forwarding, which we'll also cover in detail in this video. In order to connect to the instance from the AWS CLI using Session Manager, we first need to create the credentials for our IAM user. So let me flip over to the IAM console. The users tab, I'm going to click the Session Manager user that we created and we'll create the security credentials for this user. Let's go ahead and create the access key. I'm just gonna select other and click on next. I wanna skip the tag value and go ahead to create the access key. I'm gonna download the access key and secret access key for this user. However, you can also click on the show tab. Note that we are creating the access key ID and secret access key only for the purpose of demonstration. However, it is best practice that your IAM user assumes a role that gives you temporary access credentials in order to access the AWS services. Now that we've downloaded the access key ID and the secret access key, I'm going to flip over to my terminal on my local workstation, which is a Mac operating system. I already have the AWS CLI installed on my Mac OS. In order to verify that, I'm going to run the AWS version command. And you can see that I have the 2.12.1 version. In order to access the instance using Session Manager from AWS CLI, you also require an additional Session Manager plugin on top of the AWS CLI for this to work. So you would need to install the Session Manager plugin depending on what operating system your local workstation is in. Since mine is a Mac OS, I've already installed the Session Manager plugin. So let me flip here. So this would be the link where you can download the Session Manager plugin for AWS CLI, depending on your local workstation operating system. I will also link this document in the description below so you can refer to it later. So let me flick back to the terminal. Since I've already installed the Session Manager plugin, I'm going to run the CLI command to verify that I have this plugin installed and the version for this plugin. I will link all these commands in the GitHub repo, which you can find in the description below. You can see that I have the Session Manager plugin installed and the version is 1.2.463.0. Now that we've verified the AWS CLI version and verified that the Session Manager plugin is installed, I'm now going to configure the AWS CLI user. So in order to do that, I'm going to type in AWS configure and then provide the access key ID and the secret access key that we previously downloaded for our user. So I'm going to flip over to my downloads tab. And as you can see, I'm going to grab the access key ID and secret access key. I'm going to switch the region to AP Southeast 2 as that's the region where I have launched my instance. Now that I've done that, let's verify that the configuration for our AWS CLI user is successful. So let's run a get caller identity. And you can see that we have now connected to the AWS CLI using the session manager user. In order to connect to the instance using session manager from the AWS CLI, the command that we would need to use is SSM start session. In order to do that, let me first grab the instance ID for the instance that we have. So let me go back to the EC2 console and grab the instance ID. 
and I'm then going to paste the command. So you can see that the command is AWS SSM start hyphen session hyphen hyphen target with the instance ID as our target. Once we have written that command down, let me go ahead and hit enter so that we can start the session. You will see a message that says starting session with session ID, which has our session manager user and the random characters to form our session ID. I'm going to give it a couple of seconds and we should shortly be presented with the PowerShell session for the instance. You can see that we're now connected to the PowerShell session for our instance. So I'm going to just run a simple PowerShell command hostname, and that's going to list the hostname for our instance. If you do require an interactive session to the instance, the session manager has another feature called as port forwarding so that you can connect to your instance interactively rather than using the PowerShell session for the instance. So we'll now look into how to create an interactive session for the instance. Since we launched our instance without any key pair, for the interactive session login, you do require the user credentials that you want to use for login. So we'll first use the browser-based PowerShell session in order to create a local Windows user, which we will then use to interactively connect to the instance. So now that we have already in the PowerShell session, I'm going to just clear the session and then first go ahead and create the local user. So to do that, we will first run the set of commands and type in the password that I need. This will be the password for the local user. This is stored as a secure string, so you will not see the password being echoed onto the screen. So I'm going to hit enter. Now that we've created the password for the local user, I'm going to create the user. So to do so, the command is new hyphen local user. The username for our local user is SSM, and it's going to use the password that we stored previously in this variable. So I'm going to create that and you can see that the response is true. So it's created a local user with SSM and it has used the password that we previously provided. Last but not the least, I'm going to add this user to the local remote desktop users group. In order to do that, I'm going to paste this particular command. And what this command does is going to add a SSM user into the remote desktop users, which is a default local user group that is provided on Windows. Once the user is added to the remote desktop users group, it does have permissions to interactively log into the instance. So let's go and create that. So now that we have created our local user, I'm going to exit from the browser based PowerShell session and then use the session manager port forwarding features to interactively log in to the instance using the newly created local user SSM. Let's exit from the PowerShell session. And you can see that we are presented with the message exiting session with the session ID. So now let's connect to our instance using the SSM port forwarding. For the port forwarding, session manager uses the AWS start port forwarding session document. So let me type in the command for session manager port forwarding. So the command goes like this. So we've got AWS SSM start hyphen session. We're defining the target, which is our target instance ID. The document name is AWS start port forwarding session. So session manager uses this particular SSM document in order to enable port forwarding from the AWS CLI client through the session manager plugin to the instance through the session manager endpoint. And then we provide the parameters for our port forwarding session. The remote port is 3389, which is the default RDP port. And the local port can be any ephemeral port, preferably in the range 49152 to 65535. So I'm going to select 49163 and then click on enter. You can see that we are presented with the starting session with session ID for the session manager user. And then we are presented with a random set of characters to form the session ID for our session. With port forwarding, you now have to connect to the instance using the local RDP client. So you can see that the port 49163 is now opened for the session locally and it is waiting for connections. So let's now open the remote desktop client. So I'm going to create a session. The PC name for the session will be localhost and the port that it's listening on is 49163 in our case. So I'm going to change that to 49163. Click on save. It's now providing the credential prompt. And for this, I'm now going to provide the credentials for the local SSM user that we previously created on the instance. 
So I'm going to provide the username that is SSM. And for the password, I'm going to provide the password that I had created for this user and then hit on continue. Since the SSM user was added to the remote desktop users group, we should now be able to interactively log into the session. You can now see that we are connected to the instance interactively through session manager. So this covers how to connect to the instance in a private subnet using session manager. We try to connect to the PowerShell session through the AWS CLI using the session manager plugin. And lastly, we saw how you can interactively connect to the instance using session manager through the port forwarding feature. Thanks for watching. For more such content, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Unmask It Now. See you next time.